So I told my dad that I was filming a money mistakes I made in my 20s video today. And you know what this man said? Oh, that'll be easy. I was like, what's good? Thank you, Chime, for sponsoring a portion of this video. Back when I was a new adult, I made quite a lot of money mistakes. And I decided to film this video because I figured a lot of new adults out there uh, might not want to make the same mistakes that I did. I'm now an older adult, so I have a little bit more experience. So the first money mistake that I made in my early 20s was buying useless luxury. Now, don't get me wrong. I think luxury can, by definition, be useful. For example, whenever I buy like a designer handbag, but I like wear it every day, that's useful luxury. But useless luxury is when you don't use it. I remember at the beginning of my YouTube career, um, I bought a pair of Louboutin stilettos. To this day, I have yet to wear them. I bought them in 2016, and in the year 2021, I still have not worn them. They are literally sitting in my closet. That was a useless luxury purchase. I could have used that $600 elsewhere, could have invested it, could have put it in my retirement, you know what I'm saying? There were other uses for that $600, but I decided to spend it on useless luxury. I feel like when you're a new adult and you start making your own money, you get kind of excited that you're able to like buy your own things. And so sometimes we get inspired to purchase things that we don't need. And sometimes we get inspired to purchase things that we don't even want. I didn't even really want Louboutins, but I bought them because I thought they were trendy, you know, whatever. I didn't need to buy those. In fact, I have a video talking about like luxury items that I regret buying. I'll link that right up here on the description box down below. Another mistake I made in my early 20s and even late teens was I wasn't really monitoring my accounts. <laughs> so I ended up paying like a lot of like overdraft and late fees. So I first started realizing how important understanding finances was when I got my first debit card. I got my first debit card pretty early, but it didn't really solidify until like I graduated high school. I don't regret getting a debit card like super young because I do think that it helped quite a bit with like building a good foundation as soon as possible. But the only thing that I regret about getting a debit card so young is that I lacked the discipline and responsibility to monitor my account. I cannot tell you how much money I've spent on overdraft fees, on late fees. It just like, I just, I just couldn't get my finances together. <laughs> and it's not just me that had this issue. I think it's very common for young people to make money mistakes and like be confused because you're a new adult. Like you're just getting your life started. And now you have all of these responsibilities that you never had to worry about before. So there's a little bit of a learning curve. But things don't always have to be difficult. This portion of the video is sponsored by Chime, which is an award-winning financial app and debit card that has no monthly fees, no service fees, and no minimum balance requirements. They offer fee-free overdraft for up to $200 for cath withdrawals and debit card purchases for eligible members with SpotMe. You know what that means, folks? That means no more paying overdraft fees when you're already low on money. <laughs> One feature that I really like about Chime is that they allow you to get paid up to two days early with direct deposit. And if you're looking to get better at saving your money, because, you know, when I was a new adult, I definitely needed some help with that. They also have an optional savings account where you can make your money work harder for you. So it's like putting your savings on autopilot. To get it, first sign up for an online spending account and then you're ready to enroll. I think that Chime is a great way to start building better um, financial habits. And honestly, I wish I had something like this when I was 18. <laughs> if you're interested in learning more or even signing up for Chime, I will leave all of that information in the description box down below. Thank you, Chime, for sponsoring this portion of the video. Another money mistake that I made in my 20s was not investing. They always say that you should start investing as young as possible. My dad told me this, the finance gurus told me this, the finance influencers told me this, but I didn't listen to any of them. And I wish I did. Every single minute 
that you are not investing your money, you're losing out on like tens, even sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars. I started making money when I was 18 because I got my first job when I was 18. I wish that instead of spending on useless luxury and just like a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't need, I wish that I put uh, even a percentage of the money that I was making into a retirement account or I wish I invested it in something. Make your money work for you, not the other way around. (laughs) Another money mistake that I made in my 20s was spending too much money on rent. So my situation is a little bit different from people who have like a nine to five because I have been a freelancer since I started like my full-time job on YouTube. Um, So my income wasn't consistent. Like I didn't have a salary or anything. So every month my income was different. And right now it's pretty solid. It's kind of like stabilized by now. But when I was like first getting started on YouTube, things were so inconsistent. And because of that, the rent that I was paying each month was sometimes more than I could afford because the money that I made that particular month didn't like align with that. I don't know. It was very, my income was very inconsistent and I wish I wasn't spending too much money on rent. Now in a perfect world, if I didn't live in Los Angeles, I would have just bought a house because that way I could like build equity and I could like work towards owning something. Um, but houses in Los Angeles are about $2 million. So that was not, uh, part of the program when I was 21 years old. (laughs) It's really recommended that your rent should not exceed one fourth of your monthly take home pay. And when I was applying for apartments, that was the case. Like the past couple of months that I was working, uh, the rent was it did not exceed a fourth of my monthly income. But, you know, things started to get very inconsistent. And, you know, you know the vibes. I just wish that I didn't uh, go for that expensive in an apartment because also that apartment, I did not need that much space. I was just like, you know, I was a new adult and I was like, ooh, high ceilings, windows. I need all of this space. And then, you know, I'm an older adult now, so I realize I don't actually need that much space. Every single apartment that I move into, I'm realizing what I like and don't like. So I'm kind of glad that I had this apartment living experience before buying a house because like imagine buying a house that you end up not liking. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? So I don't necessarily regret this whole experience. It's just I, I just wish that I was a little bit more intentional with my choices, I guess. Another huge money mistake that I made in my 20s was that I was living without a budget. Like I had no monthly budget. So I was just like spending stuff. I would like look at my account and I'd be like, oh, I have this much money. So that means I can buy this designer bag. Two weeks later, I need to pay rent. (laughs) You know how that goes. So because I didn't have a budget and I wasn't monitoring my account, I just didn't really have a good grasp on my finances. I didn't know where my money was going. I didn't know where my money was coming from. I didn't know when it was coming. I'm making it seem like really bad. I was not really in that much financial distress, but I if I started being more intentional about my finances when I was earlier, I could have been in a better place that I am right now. But, you know, you live and you learn. Creating a budget and like having that visual just gives you a much better understanding of where your money is going because I was spending things like there were things that I put on auto pay on my debit card and my credit card that like I didn't even realize until I made a budget like, you know, I was paying for like all these streaming services and I was paying for like apps on the app store. I was paying for, you know, my programs that I make to create videos like there was so much auto pay and everything adds up and I just wasn't I didn't realize that because I didn't have a visual understanding of where my money was going. So um, having a budget was one of the biggest mistakes I probably made in my 20s. Um, I probably could have saved and invested way more money if I just like had that on lock. But, you know, like I said, you live and you learn. With all that being said, with all the money mistakes that I've made in my 20s, I do think that I made some really great decisions in my 20s as well. One of them being that I didn't buy a new car. I feel like I was watching like some other videos because I was like interested in seeing like what other people, like what other mistakes people made in their 20s. And a lot of the ones that people said was like buying a car because once you drive that car off the lot, the 
value of the car immediately goes down. Like once you drive that car on the lot, the value of the car goes down. It's a bad investment. And so I really like that in my early 20s, I was just driving a car that was like 10 years old. You know, it got me from point A to point B. I'm also not really a huge car person, so I didn't really care. I just needed like something to transport me from point A to point B. Um, so I really liked that I didn't do that. As you guys know, I do have a new car now. I have a, you know, I got my dream car, I got my Tesla, but I'm in a position where I'm like really, truly financially able to pay for that car. You know what I'm saying? Because there were a lot of points in my early 20s where I was like, I'm going to buy a new car. I'm going to buy a new car. And you know, you see all your other influencer friends buying new cars. You see other people on YouTube buying new cars and you're like, I want a new car, but I'm really glad that I had the discipline to not do it. <laughs> Honestly, having no car payments was fantastic. So I would highly recommend it. Like if you can just buy an affordable, reliable car and not have car payments, especially in your early 20s, it's going to save you a lot of money. And even in your late 20s, once you turn 26, you have to start paying your own health insurance. Like uh, it's, it's just really great not to have an added monthly payment to own a car. Another thing that I know I did right was that I did not move out of my dad's house until I had six months of living expenses and savings. When I moved out of my dad's house and I got into an apartment, a lot of my money and savings actually went into like the first two months of living in my apartment because you have to pay the deposit, you have to pay like your first month of rent or whatever, but then you also have to buy furniture. Like I didn't have any furniture in my apartment. Like I moved into the apartment and I was like, huh. I don't have a bed. I don't have a couch. I don't have a dining table. I don't have a TV. <laughs> like a lot of my money that was in savings, I had to like put into the first two months of living on my own because I just didn't have anything to live on. So if you're a new adult and you're looking to move out of your parents' home, finally, you need to save up some money because, you know, let's say you move out of your parents' homes, and for some reason you get laid off, you don't have a job, at least you're going to have that safety net to fall back on in the event that you need to take a couple of months to look for a new job. There's just so many things that can go wrong when you're living on your own and your parents aren't going to be able to help you. So um, having that safety net of like six months, start, you know, start with a thousand dollars, start with a thousand dollars in your emergency fund and then work towards three months of living expenses and then work towards six months of living expenses. And you can even if you're like me and you have an inconsistent income or your career is not as solid as like like a nine to five with a salary, um, you can even aim for 12 months. Just do whatever works for you in your situation. And related to that point, another thing that I know I absolutely did right was I built an emergency fund of at least 12 months. And I'm so glad I did that because once that pandemic hit, I was like, I was so good. It made me a little nervous, but I was like, I know I have this year of living expenses saved up. Like if anything goes wrong, at least I know that I'll have at least a year to live off of. So um, things like that can really take the pressure off of yourself. You know, I also have anxiety. So uh, building up these emergency funds and things like that really helped my financial anxiety quite a bit. So yeah, those were some of the money mistakes that I did and three things that I know for for sure that I did right <laughs> or things that helped me anyway. But um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. What are like money mistakes that you guys have made in your early 20s? Like, let me know. I'm always interested to hear <laughs> people's other people's mistakes. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.